In Vegas lights, the thrilling nights, UFC fights, setting the nights. Fox Sports Radio, the crowds alive, MMA locker room where legends thrive. Just my two cents, the stakes are high, Joey DFS, watch the champions fly. What's up, everybody, and welcome to the best damn YouTube UFC podcast out there. I'm the host, Big Show Picks. I'm, follow- I'm here with the boys from Pub Sports Radio. Let's go over the winners from the, the, the contest last week. Stacks and Snacks won with uh, 675. Pretty good job, considering he blew everybody up by, like, 75 points. Um. Once again, please continue to help support the, the show as you're watching in the premiere. I'm going to say it early. Hit them likes. Hit the comments after the show. TC, how did you do last week, and what are you looking forward to, my guy? Please, God, no. Please please don't make me talk about last week. Um, I hit Jim Miller. Salute to A-10 Miller. I hit that. That was the only bet I fucking hit. It was another uh, losing effort, but we got UFC Macau, boys, so... Still looking to get back on track. Hoping the boys can help me out with this one. But it's good to be back, man. Shout out to everybody watching the premiere right now. Appreciate everyone that's been supporting this program, man. So shout out to the whole fucking pub. Smash the like. Good to see y'all. I'm there with y'all in the chat right now. Let's get it, boys. Joey DFS, how was your weekend? And what are you looking forward to on this card? Um, You know, last card, I I played a little bit light. Um, Straight picks, I did pretty all right. We saw the legend himself. Johnny Bone Jones, do right. what Johnny Bone Jones do. Did his main shit. He got the finish. Um, this card, you know, early looks. I was like, fuck, man, this early ass card. But there's actually some good, decent spots on the card. I think we can all hit on Saturday. Millie Mills, how's it out in California yeah. right now? Man, it's it's everything's good out here in Killer California right now. And you know, you got the weather coming down, so it's starting to get cold. Starting to pull out the hoodies and everything. Um. But last week, man, it wasn't my best. You know, we went seven to five on predictions. Uh, as far as uh, straight bets, man, we ended up going pretty much uh, not making bank. We went two and two uh, on our premiums. Not just that. Fucking locker room talk recap, man. We did make some money, though, man. So, you know, we did come out uh, positive, positive plus units, even though we wasn't able to give it away with the parlay. Um, but some of the things that we were able to give out, Marcus McGee, he definitely cashed for us over here. We definitely felt confident with that one. Um, and me, I, I took it on the chin. I lost a lot with Kareem Silva. Uh, but not just that, though. It's really just like bad reads. I added a lot of stuff to my slate like the last day. Like I was taking the under uh, one and a half in the Bo Nickel fight. Um, I added Mickey Gall the last day, too. You know, like just bad reads. I added Veronica Macedo the last day. It, you know, like th- so that's what I'm kind of learning with. You know, some of my reads that I that I'm learning that I'm adding on that day. A lot of them ain't hitting. You know, compared to what I got uh, planned out earlier on that week. Billy Briz, shout out to you though, man. I mean, you came through with Charles Oliveira. You told us, right? You told us about Vivia or R- Rojo and all that. So much that you wanted to make a post and tag us in it and everything like that. So go ahead, tell the people exactly how you did on your packages, how you cleaned out the slate, and how you just had what probably one of the best weeks of of this year, and you're about to go hit FanDuel for like you know uh, permission slips and shit. Nah, it wasn't one of the best weeks of the year. That was making bad. Real, real quick, dude, real quick. Not to, I gotta interrupt you, Billy. You pull that mic a little bit away from your nose, dude. We're hearing your nose every time. My bad. Uh it was a good weekend. Cage Warriors event was really well. Uh hit a nice little three leg parlay that rolled right over to the UFC card with the Cage Warriors alumni. Obon Elliott was a great pick. Um, and then uh Jake Paul John Jones. That was like the money that we needed this weekend. And then uh you got to go chalk donkey season, baby. Four leg, four leg parlay, minus 200. Was there ever a doubt? David Adama? Come on. You got to pay to play sometimes. Uh, I, I, it's funny because I get a couple messages like every every other week about like different people and stuff like that. And this really is a testament to the people in the community. People ain't trying to bet a bunch of plus eight, eight plus money long shot props and go fucking two and six 
and make a half a unit. Like they rather bet the fucking chalky parlay of the minus two hundred and add their own leg and make it even odds or something like that. It's all about the information that you're giving to the people. And that's what we're trying to do here at this podcast is uh, make sure make everybody's uh, information just a little bit quicker and a little bit more efficient for the week. Hey, real quick, Billy, I, put, I, I made this clip for you because I wanted to get your reaction. I'm sure you've seen it, but this is one of the fighters that you had in the the one parlay. Where was it with the defendant go inside the distance one? What do you think about the crowd calling Bo Nickel overrated in that fight at the end? People got to understand, uh, we are watching Bo Nickel develop right in front of our eyes, in front of thousands of people every time he steps inside the cage. Uh, when you got to, he just became a fighter during COVID. The fact that he even beat Paul Craig standing is pretty impressive. Like in hindsight, obviously we all want Bo Nickel to smoke, blah, blah, blah. But I, Bo Nickel's got to learn. He's going to get some cage time. It was a good little fight for him. It's not what the fans wanted to see. It's not what the fans paid for. So I understand why they said boo. But Bo's reaction was great in the post uh, fight press corny. conference. No, he it, goes, it, he it goes, was corny, he goes, dude. It, I love how everybody was screaming he's like, boo. He's, he's, it's, it's, it's corny. <laughs> like, he, he, he's corny. He he's trying to like. He's trying to get a consolation prize from putting on a shitty performance. Just, dude, just say it wasn't your best. I was not a shitty performance. Paul, he won three, Paul Craig is one of the worst strikers and chinniest dudes in the division. He couldn't knock him out. Nah, dude, I'm sorry. That he was won a 30 27. You oh, named decision. It was a you named decision. How was that a he shitty performance? Barely outstruck him by the number. He, he, he got like six more significant strikes than fucking Paul Craig. I thought it was a weak performance from Bo Nickel. Like, no, no everybody thought he was going to finish him and he just went to the decision. Like, Bo Nickel came out to say this. He's like, look, if I would have smoked him and knocked him out in under 30 seconds, oh, that was a tune-up fight. You should have done that. But then he's like, oh. Yes, he fucking should have. He No, he yeah, should have. have. Ideally on paper, that's what he yeah, probably no should shit. Done. That's why he was a minus like, one. Did he look yeah. like a minus 1,000 at the end of that no, fight? No. 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 But he said, for experience-wise, I understand experience-wise. Then it just say that. Didn't just say it wasn't my best fight. I went in there like yeah. I should. I should probably should have knocked him out. But he's like trying to spin it. And he, he, I thought his whole post fight shit was corny. I, and a lot of people thought that too. So much that James Lynch did a video on it, and you know, talking about the over reactions and stuff. You know, so if you guys want to check that out, definitely check that out though. Uh, but yeah, man, a lot of people is let down. I actually watched that fight with my dad, and I was explaining to him that this fight is a minus twelve hundred favorite at that time, and you got to put twelve hundred dollars in one hundred, right? One thing he laughed about is afterwards on the post fight interview, he said, "Yeah, you know, I dominated him. I even made him bleed." Like, like, and it was like my dad laughed. Like, it's like, bro, like you made him bleed. Like, what type of shit is that? It's a fight you're supposed to. But I mean, when it's all said and done, still though, I mean, that was a big step up. That was a that Paul Craig is not a fighter that you give somebody who has six fights in the in, in the in the MMA, MMA. You know what I mean? So like, that was a big step up. Um, I didn't like the performance. Um, you know as well. But I mean, what to to his defense, he. Didn't really lose a round, maybe in there, just because it was bro, a you one. You name decision, bro. How was that? I, I, the, one thing, the one thing I think we clearly learned is I don't think he's main in that uh, main event ready yet. No, no, bro, he shouldn't be striking in these fights. He's just, he just fine. He got, Paul he Craig is the only fine, person. Main Paul event Craig ready. is the only person in the division that I probably would recommend Bo Nickel not take down. The everybody only else he could take down. He's the, one of the only persons people in the division he can strike with and not get knocked the fuck out, Billy. And <laughs> what he did, he won you named decision, bro. How bad of a performance is it, really? Uh, no, it's no, but, it's you got to go side tooth and nail with Paul go Craig side and though. getting a black eye from Paul side Craig. Side we got to go side note, though. That's corny. No, we got to go side note, though. We got to make sure our boy, uh, friend of the podcast here, Eric Anders, is all right. He ended up having to pull out of the fight due to food poisoning last weekend, but he was at the uh, Jets game, but he caught a lot of flack on social media for it, and it's unwarranted, man. Eric Anders is our boy, your boy, and then when somebody's your boy, you stand up for him when you feel like you need to be standing up for him, and people in the MMA community need to stop bitching about Chris Weidman in the Eric Anders fight. If somebody gets food poisoning... Then they get food poisoning. It Next happened. time, Eric, come to New Jersey, Eric, and get food. Don't get food in New York. That's nope. where the rats and that's where all the nasty shit is. Come to New Jersey, North Jersey, 
and this is me speaking. I'm from South Jersey. I'm saying, yeah. come to North Jersey and just get some food and go right back over the bridge. I'm telling you, bro. All the people that play get some for the good authentic Italian food and then for Jersey. anybody that plays for the sports teams in New York or in Philadelphia, all those professional athletes all live in New Jersey for a reason. Yeah. Better food, better living, better places. Eric, come to New Jersey. Don't go to New York next time. Hey, save that promo. I got one more for you, Billy. I'm pulling it up right now. Yeah, this week's podcast is brought to you by Black Ops 6. Yes, if you ain't get it, you should get it now through Pump Sports Radio. Please check the description for the links. Uh, sometimes people get way too caught up in sports betting, and they just need to relax, vibe out, play some video games, play some video games with the homies, and uh, friends here of the podcast, Black Ops 6. There you go. Shout out. Check it out in the description below. While you're watching the premiere, every week we're going to try a new uh, new product. But let's talk some UFC, uh, the road to UFC coming up. Road to UFC. Three... What was it? I just want to get some ad libs, bro. I can't ad lib. No, you can't. Just make sure I'm not fucking up while you do it. <laughs> yeah. Nah, you just say bro the UFC, UFC, Macau, 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 Macau. Uh, I'm going to do a audible here, and can we pull up Kari Sun Shota versus Dong Choi? Choi? Huh? Wait, what, what's going on right now? I'm pulling an audible. Uh, pull up the second fight, not the first one. God. What the fuck? So in this one here, I really like Song uh, Shota here. Shota. No, this is the wrong fight still. Bro, no, just go with it. It's a dog. It's Shota. I like Shota here because I actually know who this fighter is. You don't think we're going to get to this fucking he fight, trained, really? He, he trained, trained, he trained, he trained over there. He just trained read over off there. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not reading off nothing, bro. I'm looking bro, at you dead in your face right now. On the first fight, my dude. I <laughs> want to give the people a winner here, and I really think this is one of the best picks of the whole entire road to UFC is Kira Shota. Kira Shota is, uh, trains at the same exact gym as Laro Murphy. Um, he's coming in here, and he's going to wrestle Dong Hong Choi, and this is probably the best. Out of the three road to UFC fights, this is the one that I researched the most, and this is the one that I feel the most confident in. I like the dog in this pick. All you had to do is tell me you wanted to do this fucking fight, Billy. Now we got the whole fucking fight. You're a fucking dickhead sometimes. TC, what do you think about this fight? Uh, what do you want? Do, should I speak on what Bill, the five Billy said, or just go over? No, we're gonna go one? back in order. We'll let Billy okay. get first on the one that he wanted. Okay. Um, I so I, I actually want to give uh, Billy some props here for putting up that article. I read through it and then I went back and actually watched uh, the Road to UFC fights to like familiarize myself with these fighters a little bit more. So thank you for that, Billy. First of all. Um, and then, yeah, I watched uh, tape on both of these chicks, and I think Fang Shao Kahn is gonna fuck Shi Ming up. Mm -hmm. I don't think Shi Ming is a is a real fighter. She reminds me of like like a poor woman's Michelle Waterson. Like I don't think she has any kind of fucking pop on her strikes at all. And I think Shao Kahn is just gonna fucking run through her. I could be wrong about that, but like I like Feng Shao Kahn a lot in this fight, and she seems like the the clear side to me. That's all I have on this one. Joey DFS. Um, I was gonna hype this fight up a little bit, but hey, TC did it for me. Fang is 22 years old. She ran through the competition of Road to UFC. She's absolute. She's like five inch taller, like six inch reach. Uh, Ming looks like if there was a 105 weight class, that's exactly where she personally belongs. I think Fang's going to do what absolutely whatever the fuck she wants to do to this poor girl. And it could be on the striking because she doesn't use good range. She goes, bop, 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 bop. Or if she really wants to, she's going to take her down, Molly Whopper. She's one of my favorite plays this week. It, if you want to put in a parlay, if you want to do anything with it. Mills, what about you? Yeah, man. Give me Zhang Yong Kang in this spot, man. Um, She actually has a good fight resume. She fought some good, talented fighters before she even got on the road to UFC in this little tournament and stuff like that. She's a physical specimen for this. That's why she is that big favorite on the price tag. I do think she has the opportunity to win inside the distance. Um, So with that one, I'm with Joey on this one. I'm going to be looking at that one as one leg for a parlay piece. Not like that, but it could kind of compare us to like Malik Malik High, how we had him at that mm -hmm. minus 380. This is one fight on here to where I kind of feel real confident playing that minus 310 as one leg for me. Billy, you want to touch on this one at all? Yeah, I kind of felt 
differently. I haven't finished the full tape study to it, but it did pop up because there is an eight year age gap. But I also feel like the price tag is a little bit too wide. Like, so the reason why I say that is because I only watch maybe two or three Fangs fights. And the first one I watch is her getting submitted by Lee Neong in the like two minutes. And I'm sitting oh, there on the exactly. Sunday, bro, I'm sitting there on the Sunday night football stream. And that's one of the three fights that I'm watching of her. And I'm like, yo, this girl's minus 300. How? Like the other girl's name is called the doctor. I would have met. And she went to the university of China, China medicine. She's probably on steroids. I, like, I, I, like, I think the other girl, I think Fang's going to win, but I don't know how like confidence rating wise, probably like fourth or fifth for me. Shout out. You just made me remember something back from my fight tape and days when you were fighting, when you fight tape, Billy, are you watching one fight at a time or do you have as many fights up from that fighter up at one time? So kind of just, just watching all of them. Cause that's what I used to do. I used to get like three fights done in the same time that one, you know, like I would just nah. put as many up there on the screen and just kind of try to like watch them all. So the way I have my setup right now, what I'm talking to you on is the desktop, but the laptop that I used to do the shitty the shitty streams on here like it had the shitty quality that mills kept on making fun of me of is here and then i have my tv literally right behind the desktop and then i have a small tv the small tv i had the sunday night football game on and i was tape studying on the big screen while we we're doing the sunday night football stream so hashtag no days off yeah, that was uh, a terrible, terrible question by my was we got a podcast to do next yeah. fight uh yo versus i'm not even gonna try to berg berg gang Juice whatever season. whatever FanDuel put his name as i seen uh tapology had a different name up there too but uh we'll start with you on this one mills yeah man i like the favorite in this spot he's gonna come forward um you know looking at both these guys in there um i really don't trust none of them too much but if there is one that i like and there's gonna be the favorite in there i know that he's gonna be the more aggressive fighter too um his opponent i want to say he's like a one trick pony he only has one way to win and i want to say that's with the wrestling uh, this guy, he can at least strike and mix in some takedowns. Uh, I'll be honest with you guys. Only did a little bit of tapes on him. Seen about two of his fights in there. Seen two of the other guys' fights. It is what it is, man. This ain't no road to the UFC to me that I'm going to be clamoring about. But I do like the favorite in this one. Joey. Um, I know you. Have you watched the fights? I don't agree necessarily what the commentary said. Oh, is he like the China Khabib? I'm like, oh, come on, bro. I know he's a chain style wrestler. <laughs> Billy, that's what I'm talking about. He said, oh, I know you got to hype up your fighters doing the thing. But look, he's a chain style guy. He's going to pretty much try to control you. He has good BJJ, but his striking is really not there. He just tries to throw and change levels and chain. Um, the other dude, uh, I'm going to try to pronounce his name, Juzesli. I'm going to do it for the crowd. I'm probably wrong. Oh, well, you can sue me later. Um, you know, he's the more well-rounded guy. You know, he's a taller dude. He has a three-inch height, five-inch reach. I know he trains with guys like Machete, who's on the card, uh, Kyle Long, who's also on the card. So he gets the good looks. If he can't keep it on the feet, I think Yu's probably going to win a decision. I think he's going to control him up, down, because he averages six takedowns. So if you think six takedowns, you're thinking guys that, oh, if you're getting six takedowns, you're allowing fighters to get up and have opportunities to fight. So... Maybe you is probably a better DFS play if he continues up, down, up, down, up, down. But I'm on you, though. No Diddy. <laughs> what about you, Billy? Um, I would say the biggest thing that I noticed in all three of these road to UFC finals is the bookies have – just the same exact amount of information as we have and they have no idea what the fuck to expect and they're just using the same exact price tags from the tournament and yep. the minus 150 price tag is the same exact price tag that he was in his fight in august 23rd so it's like who knows who should actually really be the favorite in this fight like i don't think like i i think he should be the favorite but like if you if i just ran the film and i didn't know who the favorite was and i didn't know that he was exactly minus 150 uh, like a um, couple months ago, that I, I I would probably say this should be a pick 'em. So I think this should be a pick 'em. So I, I don't I don't know. Out of the three fights, I think this has the worst amount of value. I agree with that. Quick question for you, TC: Are you a fan of this road to UFC stuff? No, no, not really. No, I I think yeah. it's just it, it seems like kind of a it seems like kind of a a, a way to like 
get bur- like this get this like burgeoning Chinese market going. It's ridiculous, PC, bro. It's ridiculous. It's like yeah, they're trying to push the PFL Chinese market. Mania. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. PFL, PFL mania bills. That is a great example. Uh, I hate PFL mania. Any PFL Europe card I have not bet on. That shit's corny, bro. I might have bet on one or two cards of those. What are you thinking on this one, though, TC? Are you a fan of it at all? I mean, I don't have a ton of interest in it. I, I watched a little bit of tape on both of them. Guess I favor you with the sub grappling. Uh, BJ has been subbed a couple times, but yeah, I don't know if I, I don't, I don't know if I really want to have anything to do with it. Honestly, um, yeah, it's a pass for me. But yeah, I, I guess I can see where Billy's coming from. Like, she, you know. It's not like he's like a prohibitive favorite or anything, but yeah, like I, I see why he's favored though. I guess like a little bit, and I think this I agree actually, the same as Zach. This, this line's actually about right. I would, I would say, and I'm just this pass for me. But uh, if it pretty- was a pick 'em, bro, I would actually bet it. But the fact that you have to lay juice and find out which one of these are the worst of the Chinese two fighters, and show like, me. Nah, yeah, I'm just, just I'd rather just watch this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is the prelim main event. I think it should go under though. All right, Joe, go ahead on this one since Billy already. Jump the damn gun. Jump the damn gun. So out of all the road to UFC fights, these are probably two of the easiest names to say on the damn card. Um, I do like the dog. Look, for one, how the fuck does he make 125 at 5'10"? Bro, this, he's huge, bro. He's, he's he looks like Mio Nagny trying to go down a fucking flyweight. Gangle but, God forever. Bro, he's 5'10 <laughs> fighting at flyweight, bro. We're the yeah. same height, bro. That's wild. He's taller than me for crying out loud fighting flyweight, but... Like I said, he's a good striker. He uses range real well. Um, I'm honestly not overly impressed with Choi. Both of his wins on the road had to go to a split, so it could have honestly went either way. But like I said, who's the more powerful was probably Choi. Who's the more well-rounded? I would slightly give it out to uh, Shahoya. And I'm probably going the dog, man. You can get good value. I think he could definitely win a decision. But I think he could also touch up Choi. You watch his fights. He gets touched. He gets red real quick. He can bleed and... Judges do like damage, so I do like the dog. Do you see? Yeah, I don't know. This is kind of making me a little a little skeeved about it. But yeah, I was on the tape study. I kind of like I kind of like Sahota too. Um, I he I watched. Uh, I guess it was like an amateur or like low level pro Muay Thai <laughs> fight of his. So like he does have a little bit of like a striking background, and he does like he he, he pumps the jab out there. Got a good low kick. Um. And yeah, and I, I just think he could use his range. And this one feels like it should kind of be a pick 'em. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I kind of feel like Billy was saying about the last one. So yeah, I'm kind of leaning towards the dog here. Um, I haven't made a play on it yet, but yeah, I'm, this is my, another one I'll probably end up staying away from. But yeah, it feels like dog pass. Mills, finish this one out. Yeah, man, I like Troy in this spot, man. Just looking at it like this, man, I see it. His last three opponents actually has a lot better fight resumes than his uh, than his opponent. Not just that, man. He was able to win on a tough fight. Tough fight weighs him on decision. He got three KOs. The rest of his wins, five come by decision. Um, not just that. It seems like the fans and the judges like him, or he knows what to do, how to win. In here, I think the price tag is going to come down because I do think once people see these guys on the scale, they're going to see one guy this tall. One guy, Joey Tall. So, you know what I mean? So, I think they're going to be going for the taller fighter, and I'm going to be able to get a better price tag on the favorite. So, yeah, I'm actually looking to play the favorite in this spot. I like how you said Joey Tall. And, Billy, act like you can't make 125, but you know what? No, I'm talking about, about like, bro, 5'10 and being mad. Bro, when you look at – because I know uh, Kiri Sun Shota because he's at Manchester Top Team, bro. That's a good ass gym. They're having Damn. a really good summer, and Lerone Murphy looked really fucking good. Like he's in there with UFC fighters day in and day out. I, I don't know what the other guys got going on, and the sh- like TC said, the shit that I watched from him I was not impressed, bro. He should not be a favorite in this fight. Uh, people just see one guy's undefeated, and other guy's got two losses in their pet. Was was was, was was Dong the dude that was leaking like a sieve out of his nose in like the first round of that one fight? Am I thinking of him? His in his last fight where he was just well, he is like, a bleeder. He leaking bad. He's man. definitely a bleeder. Might have been. Uh, it might have been somebody else. But too. like prior to his road to UFC yeah. fights, right? He's fighting some random ass fights of like. The road to UFC fights, it's like when you look at somebody's record, right? You can only fight who's in front of you, but then as you progress, uh, the competition is only going to get tougher, and he's just not performing as good. Um, But, yeah, long story short, I like the dog. All right, boys, you know what time it is. Here it comes. It's the price is right. 
Mills, first one up to bat on this one. Machate versus Nicholas Mota. What do you think about this one, and is the price right? All right. So, I mean, looking at the price, I don't believe it's right. I would have liked if it was around that minus 180 price tag. Um, it was supposed to be a Nasha Jabul, I want to say, taking on um, – ah, fucking – no, no, no. Who is he? I forget who he was supposed to fight. But Nasha <laughs> was supposed to fight somebody else, right? And I just remember Chris Padilla, uh, you know, calling him out saying, hey, man, you know, if you want that fight, I'll fight you. He called him out. Long story short, Chris Padilla got hurt. And it was like, hey, I can't fight you, da 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 uh, and then Nicholas Mata came up after that. Nicholas Mata, he's been looking good in his last uh fight, you know, and his last probably fight before that too, right? Surprising people as an underdog. Um, besides that, in this one though, I like Mashatate, whatever you want to pronounce his name, man. Over there training, almost had it, Mashatate. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Mashatate. You know, I mean, that's how it goes when the plug and play starts to hit in, you know. Uh, but yeah, man, I, I like the way he's been training. He's over at Team Alpha Male. He's been getting those better looks at camp and young, young in the game, twenty four years old, man. Got power in his hands. Um, I'm definitely gonna be betting the under in this fight. I don't think this one goes the distance. Um, that'd be one prediction right there that I like. But at minus 220, ah, Nicholas Mata, man, he, he can crack with the best. But then again, he can get cracked, too. So, you know, ne you never know, man. Um, And it's like the first fight of the night. I would hate to just kind of get too invested at minus 220 with one leg. And then, you know what I mean? i um, already be out of the parlay. So I'm going to just see what happens with this line uh, later on in the weekend time. Mills, you sound good, but I do think you're the one with a little bit of an echo. Joey, what's up with this fight? As Mills broke down, I think this is going to be a good slugfest early. The, I'll be damn shocked if this fight goes to the scorecard. Usually it's Mata early. I think Mata is going to be the more faster fighter early. But my shot day, he does have good cardio. I think he can get out of round one. Mata does tend to slow down after the first like five and a half, six minutes. And I think the under is going to hit. I'm on Mata Shate. I don't agree with the tag. Because, honestly, somebody could hit the floor early in this fight. It could be either one. They both have somewhat chinny chins. And I don't know if I have a pick right now. But I would say, like, if I'm putting money on minus 220, probably not. But I do agree with the under. Billy, what about you? Do you think the price is right on this one? Man, I hate how we have to do these Chinese fighter cards. Because betting on Chinese fighters outside of Song Yudong, a lot of them don't move their head off the center of line movement. And that would be the biggest like flaw of Mahashate because he does have really good striking. And this is set up for him to win. If you look at Moto, all of his losses are inside the distance. He's got knocked out four times, got submitted once. Bro, they're literally handing Mahashate a win on a silver fucking plate again. And if he goes to a split decision like he did in the Gabriel, like Gabriel Benita is going to a split decision, I can understand, you know, Gabriel Benita, he's been around the block a little bit. But, like, I think it was just betting bias of, like, damn, I bet the Tom Nolan knockout KO 1-2 against Moda and he did not look good. That was probably the first card of the year, and that was probably one of my worst bets of the year. Um, I think Von Shade is about to knock him the fuck out. But it's just, like, how confident do I have to really be on it? And But when you start looking and comparing price tags, you start saying Feng da dang da dong da dong kong at minus three ten or Ma Shate at minus two twenty. I'll take Ma Shate at minus two twenty. You know what, Billy? That's, I'm just gonna pick up right where you <laughs> left off. Like I've been, I'm I'm like trying to like hold myself back from making Ma Shate <laughs> my leg. Like I know he's not gonna be in the core, but it's like I might just want to get that jank out of the way real quick. Uh, real. I think I think Ma Shate is about to shadow realm Nicholas Moda. I think it's gonna be I think it's gonna be dicey for about minute and a half moda might land one and then boom i think it's gonna look like the manuel torres fight my shot about first round knockout i, I think the price is pretty much right you know, it's it's one of those prices that could look like Oban Elliott after the fight. Like, it seemed I wish scary, I it seemed that scary originally, <laughs> but then he, by the end of it when moda's in a heap he'll look like he covered it yeah Especially, I don't know though. They are using new gloves. The new gloves, not the old gloves. Uh, I thought I thought they went back to the old gloves. I thought oh, God. they're using the new gloves because they used the new gloves during the road to UFC finals. <sighs> Your first and that's and right right here, I just see a picture of Nicholas Mata putting on the new gloves. Great. New gloves are back. All right, new gloves are back. TC, you're up on this one. I know how to say these on song. Song Kanan and Salakov. Man, no, no, thank you. Um, Salikov is super old. Song isn't a spring chicken. Both of them are like 
decent hammers and not very good nails. Uh, I want nothing to do with this motherfucker, dude. I guess I'll take Salikov, but nah. big old, big old pass. I don't even know if I can say dog or pass. Just pass or pass. This this fight sucks, Billy. I, I couldn't agree anymore because like you literally Mills had to literally like if, if we had to like if we're in person Mills literally had to give me the money out of his own fucking wallet out of his pocket give it to me walk me to the sports book to the window and say if you don't fucking bet Song Kanong against Ricky Glenn God damn it I am giving you the money to do it I, I, and like he wants to bet this but he won't say it just like I, I like literally i didn't want to bet him at all against ricky glenn and it was one of mills's premium plays i think and i was like i gotta ride the mills on this man and um if it wasn't for mills's having it i probably wouldn't have bet that shit at all bro and that's how i feel about this one bro bro salikov salikov has the market he uh, did the regional scene in china and he has the russian blah, blah, blah. it's supposed to be set up it, they they probably don't give a fuck who wins this fight and i could probably give a fuck who to bet on this fight uh originally uh which is funny because uh the price is right was hard to do this week because the price tags this price tag stands out as the closest price tag but we wanted to uh it's a weird fight, though, man. I just don't like this fight at all at all. Mills. So this fight, actually, for me, man, this is how I came about it. You know, I look at the card. I look at the, the bets that I, in the fights that I want to make. And I made it early. It was minus 155. Kind of remind me of Oban Elliott last week. Got him at minus 140. Think he closed at minus 260. Um, so in this one, I did get on Muslim Salikov minus 155 early on. Um, just, just because I looked at every single fight and I was like, I wouldn't bet that. I wouldn't bet that. I'm not betting that. Okay. I could bet this now. And then looking at it at that minus 180 that it's at minus 190 might close out of minus 200. Um, King of Kung Fu. I think he's due 12 wins by KO three wins by sub five going to decision fight IQs there. He's going to be the faster fighter in here to mix in the takedowns. Make it even more boring. I think he's going to be more dangerous fighter. Um, think he can win in the third round or by decision. Give me King of Kung Fu in this one. Jerry DFS. A little bit of conviction there, Mills. I like it. Yeah, uh, that's a good breakdown. You know, battle of the two older guys. You know, Kanaz only six years younger. Uh, Sadi Kyle's forty. Um, I was also. I remember Mills saying, "Yo, play uh, Kan Song versus Ricky Glenn," and. I was at the bar. I was at the casino. I was like, you know what? Let me put a couple hundred on that, that man's song. Just a money line it. Clean hit. But if you rewatch that fight, if you <laughs> told me good. Song had a killer instinct, he could have finished Ricky Glenn any point during that fight. Any point. And I think, I think you know, he's going to be the better. I think that's how striking match goes. I think Song's going to be the better boxer. But I think Salikov will mix in the boxing with the kicks. I think he could mix in takedowns. I'm sorry. I have a rule. I'm not betting anybody this caliber i think this fight should be somewhat closer on the odds because if song really lets it go i think he can shadow realm salikov you know he has four, four of his uh five losses are by finish you know two knockouts two submissions but i think if he does get finished it'd be a knockout if song brings that killer instinct at plus 140 depending on by saturday morning you might even get bigger odds i think he might be worth a, a dog play your first step on the next one joey Yanan versus Arici. Ooh, so how my boy Mill say it? Stick to your girls, stick to your gut, stick to your guns. I gotta stick with do 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 do. I gotta Here's stick my with my baby right here. And this is what I think. I know Yan. I know the price tag. I think it's a little big. I don't think the price is fully right. I think she's the way better striker, and it's not even fucking close. But we've seen in fights where she does give up takedowns. She allows to stay on her back. She gets she can get out controlled. Richie's not uh Wei Li by any means, but she is also a strong grappler. And the UFC is really trying to see look, if you can get past uh Jan here, maybe sometime in 2025, we can give you another potential fight that gives you a title eliminator. So I think Richie can definitely mix it in with the grappling and takedowns. And I kind of hope the line climbs up even more so I can get a better, juicier line on Richie. But yeah, I'm going Richie. Mills. Man, this one was gonna be a good one, man. Um, damn. When I, when I looked at the fight when I first you know seen it announced, I was like, damn, Yon Yon's gonna get this one. 
Now I seen the price tag and I was like, eh, minus one ninety. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, whatever though, because I still kind of was like, damn, she's probably still gonna get this one, right? Like, you look at it just based upon it. I mean, th this matchup's I think it's pinpointed for her. It's like in her backyard. It's to get her back in the wing, you know, call them. And this is the thing. She's one of those, like, um, uh, I want to say Chinese fighters that kind of, like, is not real popular in the U.S. So she's probably going to be way more popular over here, right? Um, And all that being said, I was looking at Tapita's Ricci's fight. People that she was fighting as of late, she got wins over, like, Jillian Robinson, some good names and stuff, Angela Hill. But... When she fights strikers like this, this is what's going to give her, I think, like, you know, uh, not that advantage. And if she can't get those takedowns in there, you think she's going to win a decision in this other girl's backyard? I don't. I don't think she can finish her either. I want to go with my girl. I want to go with my gut. Man, Tabitha Ricci. And I'm, I'm thinking I might, you know, but um, I, I, I don't think the price is right. Um, on the favorite. That's why you see Tabitha Ricci money coming in right now. I do think Jan will come down to a minus 170. Whatever I got to do, I got to make my decision quick. I'm back and forth. Uh, I'm, I, might, I might decide by the end. Billy, what do you think about this one? Bro, Mills broke that shit down perfectly, bro. Like, he knows we be singing that baby shark shit, but we actually really fans of Tabitha Ricci since she came into the UFC. And damn, man, this is not... Like, so if this was... I, I do think the three rounds favor her of like she can bullshit a three round fight and win a bullshit decision, <laughs> kind of like the Tisha Torres show it. But man, I think she might get fucked up in the striking exchanges, bro. I like I can't get that past my head of like she's going to get bop, man. Uh, Tabitha is a dime piece, so who knows what the fuck can happen? Maybe, but man, I don't know, man. I I'm with Mills, like I. The, the, I be I be getting lucky with women's MMA, man. This might be the one. We might have to go with the fight metrics. Just, the fight metrics weigh out a little bit too much. I went Mills, yo. Y'all, y'all just too good of a striker. I fucking her getting taken down. Like they're striking at distance, bro. I don't know how tough this gonna be competitive. It, it's just because it is when Yon fought Mackenzie Dern, right? She was able to like stuff those takedowns against Mackenzie Dern. She's been at Team Alpha Male now for a long time. She got her training partner fighting on this card too. Two cent, man. What, what you gonna do on this one, man? Nothing. Yan Shao non decision. There you are. Bam, bam, big <laughs> old. All, right, All right, boys. 37 minutes in. Time. 37 minutes in. Let's head to the prelims. Start it out. My shot versus Mota. Billy, I'll start with you. Yeah, we broke this one down a little bit. Uh, all of uh, Moda's losses have been side distance four out of five by knockout. This fight is kind of set up for Mahashate. It's just Mahashate is just Mahashate sometimes. You, you, there's moments that you think, man, this is my boy, Mahashate. Then there's moments like, Mahashate, what the fuck is you doing, bro? <laughs> like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And it's, uh, I've always, I, I guess I have a betting bias to Mahashate because I think he came in the UFC as an pretty sizable underdog against steve garcia and he fucking shadow wound him i think that's the last time he didn't lose so uh i got my shot here by knockout so inside the distance for billy tc what do you hear you my shot about first or second round knockout joey uh, i'll make it short first second round knockout my shot and we all said we're not gonna try to put him in the parlay but what, what about you mills what do you think about this one I didn't oh, see man. So they got the over and under, man. They only got fight in and inside the distance minus 200. You know, they got the over one and a half out of minus 145 right there. Might be a sneaky spot. Could go 10 minutes. Whoever knows, man. I think my shot gets the job done in there. Um, You know, I do. I Looking at this whole card, this is the guy that I've seen fight at least four or five times with my own eyes. Seen him win three times. Seen him lose at least twice. So, I mean. I, I know what I got with this guy. The only thing that scares me is just it's the first fight of the night. You know what I mean? But he has been preparing for this. Like I said, Nicholas Moda is taking this fight on short notice, flying over to the country and everything like that. Um, You know, but um, he had enough time. Be real, though, Mills. If we up at 3 o'clock in the morning on a USC live stream, you don't think we bet the first fight of the night, man. We got to really get in, man. We might have to rock with the boy, my Shante. Some way, yeah, some way we're waking up yeah. early and not yeah. betting the first fight. It, it, it is one where you can also reload if it doesn't go that it doesn't go that way. If you're someone that bets on every fight and you're like, I got to have action no matter what, I'm going to have parlays no matter what, or 
fucking. Yeah. I mean, just looking at it though, it is one of the things to where it's one I'm of sure the notice, of the man. That we all kind of know about, and we all, you know. So I'm, Mo, I'm Mo's not, gonna be swinging crazy in there, and my shot is gonna walk him onto a fucking. The right first when I first out. loaded up the card, the first name that I looked at, going building, building the set, not even looking at my shot. Hmm. Right. So I'm not too. I'm. I'm not. I'm not declined at all. But we got a podcast. Let's keep it rolling. I think which way. Bill's your first up on this one, Long. My boy, Kang Bang Lee, man. So look, man. This fight came out on my book two weeks ago. Minus 144. My boy Lee looked at it and was like, "Oh, I got a hot." Like, I let me chill, man. I got a lot of other stuff hopping off too. That line dropped and dropped and dropped. I'm like, damn, all right, cool. Now it's like plus 105 in there. Um, so in this one, man, I think he's gonna be able to get the get back in this spot, man. Took his uh first fight on short notice against Chris Gutierrez, uh, coming from the LFA, explosive with his power in his hands. He can mix in the takedowns too. He's fighting a guy that they like though, man. They've been having him at the UFC PI. He's gonna mix in the wrestling, mix in the takedowns. I lost with him last time. I had a play on this dude against his opponent, and he just he looked okay, you know what I mean? But um, in this one though. Of course, he's going to have his back up against the wall. Uh, but give me the dog in this one, Kang Bang Lee, to get it done. Joey DFS. So I think this fight's going to be an actual slugfest. I think both guys are going to have an opportunity in this fight. But I think Kang Lee, there's a chance. I think he can chin him. Dude's been three out of nine losses for uh, Long. has been by knockout. Two in round one, one in round two. And outside of the UFC, everyone's like, oh, but Lee looked gun shy of his Gutierrez. I'm like, that's his short notice debut against a guy that pretty much leg kicked the living shit out of him. I don't see that from Long. He's pretty Long pretty much tries to hold in the clinch, make it boring, mini control that way. I think Quang Lee's gonna have the bigger moments. So I'm going with the dog. Billy. Uh I don't know who's the dog or who's the favorite, but uh Lee's I'm gonna bring brother. back a little bit of memory time. Remember the Whitaker Alaskarov card, and it was the first fight of the night, and TC yep. was calling that shit, and we're like, hey, yo, what the fuck are we? watching <laughs> it's like that was a good night dude that was one of my better like, nights of the year what i'm getting at is oh and this is and this is ignorant of me to say this I don't think that nigga's that good, bro. Give me Quang Bang Lee. <laughs> like, bro, he was in there and he was looking like, boop, 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 boop. I'm like, yo, there's no process to this striking at all whatsoever. It's like, whatever you think of a road to UFC fight is, it was exactly that it, right in front of you. And it was like, what yeah, the fuck? One fight, like one Muay Thai fight. Yeah, it was like, what the fuck are we watching, bro? Uh, wouldn't bet this fight anyway, but uh, give me Quang Bang Lee, though. What about you, TC? Yeah, Lee, knockout. All right, your first step on this one. Longer versus Jose Ocha. Yeah. yeah, man. I think that's I think that yeah, I think that's about right. Loner Kavanaugh and Jose Ocha, Ochoa. Um man, this could be one of the better fights on yep. the whole fucking card, honestly, if it goes the distance. Um man, I think the price is a little bit wide, but I kind of think Loner is gonna win a decision. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised, though, if it's Ochoa, man. Like, he's really fucking nasty in the clinch. Um, and he's got good striking, too. And he's fucking good for, like, a young kid. Uh, he's a little bit younger. The strength of schedule is definitely on Kavanaugh's side. But, yeah, I think this could end up being a really fucking good fight. I, I get why Kavanaugh's the favorite. Like, he's got the clean striking. But I kind of think... He can kind of be a little bit of a pretty boy at times. You know, he's gotten he's had some moments where he's gotten rocked. Um, he got rocked by this one dude that's like one and one or something in Cage Warriors. Can't remember mm -hmm. the dude's name, but like, hey, hey, dude, Ochoa is not a fucking punk. It doesn't look like on paper. So I'm not going to be going crazy with Loner Kavanaugh here. Um, but I, I'll, I'll say that he wins a decision in a fucking good fight. Billy. Yeah, I thought uh, going into this week, just looking at the lines before tape study, I thought uh, Lunar Kavanaugh was going to be like one of my parlay pieces this week. <laughs> uh, tape study, had you want. <laughs> yeah, the, the TC's right. This is, might be a little bit. It's going to be a little bit sweaty here. Uh, Ocean is not no bum, bro. He trades with Charles Oliveira. He Brox. When you watch his films, shoot like the, the whole box. entire shoot the box gym is like in his corner. It's not like he's one of the jobbers in the gym. So it's like I just think that he's going to concede too much positions on the ground and Loner Kavanaugh's control time will ultimately be the reason why he wins a decision here. But 
I don't know how giddy up I am to parlay it as like a base, if that makes sense. Of like, I think he wins, but more of like four, five, six on my confidence scale this week, not one, two. What about it? What's your confidence on it going the distance? I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to bet going the distance because I bet Loner Kavanaugh's fight on the contender series to go to distance and he fucking shadow won that kid uh, in like 30 seconds. Joe, what about you? So I remember I talked to you about, about potentially playing the flag. I go back and forth and I was like, you know what? Early week, I might put Kavanaugh as a flag. And then I did my research and Billy said, um, Oche was actually supposed to fight Jack Duffy on a contender series. And then that Syracuse wrestler came in or that one wrestler who ended up losing his second fight on the contender series came in and took that first fight. Um, as Billy said, he trains with Du Bronx. Um, I think both of these guys have good potential inside the UFC personally, but you're telling me I'm trying to pay three seventy five for a guy in Kavanaugh. No, I think this, I think both guys are going to have good moments in the fight. I'm leaning Kavanaugh. If I had a confidence factor, maybe a six and a half, maybe a six, Seven almost, but I think OJ is definitely gonna have his moments because Kavanaugh can get touched. He can definitely get hit with straight shots, and but I think Kavanaugh later rounds. I think he's gonna probably just get a decision. What about you, Mills? Yeah, so in this one, man, they got the fight not going the distance minus one fifty. I think that's the way to attack it in this one. Uh, if this was the price is right, of course, man. I don't think the price is right. I was looking to see what Kavanaugh was going to be when he opened up. If he opened up at minus 180, I'd be like, all right, cool, let's go. Minus 300, I was like, all right, cool. I felt he was going to be a way more confident parlay piece. I still do think he's going to win, man. I don't think the price is right, though, as one of those three-to-one favorites. His opponent does like to come forward, could mix in some wrestling. Um, but this is the thing, man. His schedule of opponent, talk about fighting cans. All he fought was Mountain Dew. Pepsi and Coca Cola cans, <laughs> like, like that's boom, it. Boom, boom, boom! Crush, crush, like, crush! I'm not lying. He has one win over somebody that has like a a, a reputable uh, record, you know. But with Doctor Pepper, up, yeah, nah, man, you fight who's All in brand. front of you. I think you it was Captain Cool with Joey's shirt, you know. Um, so in this <laughs> one, though, I do think Kavanaugh wins, and I think the fight's not going to be able to go the distance. Uh, minus 150 fighting inside the distance. A lot of people was playing this dog. That's why I'm not hopping to the window and telling you guys Kavanaugh. But I do like Kavanaugh, man. Last fight against the uh, contender series on Anton Ho. Actually just spoke to Anton Ho today. Um, You know, uh, he said he uh, booked some stuff, applied for the uh, Ultimate Fighter. I think he's also a fighter to where I was like, man, this would have been dope to have him on this car. He's from Vietnam. I know, all right. Like, like he's from Vietnam. He could have took a short fight notice or something. Like, this would have been his spot if he would have won. You know what I mean? I wanted to God tell him that. But, like, it is what it is. You know what I mean? Um, That's one fighter to still look out for. You know what I mean? Uh, So, yeah, uh, I do think this is potential fight of the night because two fighters that's going to come forward and bang. All right, you're first up on this one. Carlos Hernandez versus NT. Man, this is crazy because I witnessed it live. Back, what, two, three weeks ago, making plays, looking at books. See uh, Nimmer Ball, however you want to pronounce his name, minus 140. Seeing who was fighting Carlos Fernandez. I was like, oh, okay, cool. I thought I had to get on right then. Because some of these lines that you see, they go up quick. And I ain't know, you know, something like I thought, right? Motherfucker. I must have came back to that site like four, five days. Man, he went to like big cuss money. I was like, wait, what happened? Um, I'm just like, I'm just somebody out. out. Shit. Like, like Ooh, Carlos Hernandez is a minus two to one favorite right now. Wild, this bro. line went wild. And this was one thing that I was just going to bet because I was like, I need to be on the right side before it goes up, you know, and. Oh, God damn. Mongolian fighter, though. This is the thing about him, man. Um, You know, he's explosive with his power. Doesn't have a lot of cardio. Um, Slows down as the fight goes. But he can mix in the wrestling. He can mix in the takedowns. That's stuff that I like to see. Carlos Hernandez is going to be the overall better fighter, better gas tank, Uh, you know. And this is the thing. He can win usually by decision. I don't think he's getting it done in this one. Give me the dog in this one, man. I think the nomad's going to come on now and show you guys, hey, man, Mongolian power at MMA is here to stay and make his name known. Oh, shit. Second round KO. Joey DFS. I'm going to try to break down his in syllable. Two men, dem, brill. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get close and say it that way. Um, I think, you know, he does have the grappling. He does have power in his own hands. I saw it two to one for Hernandez. I know Hernandez. 
is training with guys like Malal Muhammad, uh, Baja Mendez. So two guys that are definitely helping him work on his takedown defense because Hernandez on paper, he's a decent striker, throws good combinations of volume. And if this newcomer doesn't get the fight to the ground, he can slow down in the fight. Hernandez could win minutes striking on the feet. This is a fight I'm probably passing on as a potential bet, but like if I do, I had a free bet, and I had to pick one. I'm probably going with the dog. Uh, seven to eight wins are by finish. He has, what, two round ones? Yeah, two round ones, two round twos, and a round of three. Uh, I got to reread that. But, yeah, seven to eight wins inside the distance for the dog. So, if you're getting good value, plus 160, not a bad look. I think he can definitely win time control, get some takedowns. But it's a fight I'm passing on. Yeah, this fight kind of reminds me a little bit of the market with uh, Damon Jackson and Jim Miller last week when um, – Damon Jackson opened up as a dog and then he went to like a huge favorite and he got diced in that fight. And Jim Miller still cash, regardless of the live movement. I'm kind of with Mills here. Like, all right, let, let the MMA bros do their MMA bro bullshit and tell you how Carlos Hernandez is going to get takedowns here. And we're going to make money on the dog. Be quick with this one. DC. Run to the hills. Run for your lives, boys. I've bet the dog as well. God, I hope I don't curse this. Um, yeah, I think uh I just don't think Carlos Hernandez is very good. I'm not saying he's like shit. I just don't think that he's very good. And this just seems like another like set they're like setting him up to get beaten by another like Asian prospect. So give me the Mongurian. I think on the feet. I, I think Carlos Hernandez is going to be in trouble because uh, he's going to have. This, I think this dude's going to have the reach advantage, and I think that Carlos Hernandez is going to get tuned the fuck up. Um, yeah, but he gets out wrestled. He gets out wrestled and he gets out grappled by these Asian dudes. Like that, I have not fought nothing but other Asian dudes. So it's like I think I think. Uh, Nayam Jagal Tumindimbari. However you pronounce it. Y'all gonna, y'all name. gonna make me learn his name now, huh? I, if he wins, I'm gonna have to learn it, huh? Uh I, I that's that's the best I can do. Tumindimbari, Tumindimbarel, some shit, some What's Mongolian that? shit. But yeah, give me this fucking descendant of Genghis Khan to uh to <laughs> to fucking smash Carlos Hernandez. I'm I was surprised I was expecting to see him as the favorite. And I now that now that he opened the favorite and it went crazy like that, it makes sense. Um because I was like, I was looking to I was like, man, this dude ain't fought nobody. Carlos Hernandez, experience, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, man, this dude like could fuck Hernandez up. I think he's gonna do that. I, I think it's kind of like th- what I don't get why they would like, okay, we're giving Hernandez a win. We want Hernandez to beat <laughs> yeah. this unbeaten Mongolian prospect. That doesn't make sense to me. We're talking narrative. So yeah, give me the Mongolian. I agree with you though. Uh Fang and she. We talked about this one. If you guys want to see the breakdowns go in the beginning of the podcast, me personally, I'm just going to say Fang decision, low confidence. TC? I think Fang knocks her the fuck out. Second round. Joey? Fang by any method she fucking wants. Mills? Yeah, man. I got the favorite in this one. Wins inside the distance. Shata versus Troy Mills. Yeah, spoke about it on the prices right in here. Um, Shot is going to be the way taller fighter in here. Um, this is the thing though. I do think Troy's the one that's just like the A side, kind of like the guy that's supposed to win the fights. You know, kind of has the pretty boy image too. Um, you know, his striking is going to be a technical guy. I think he can win by decision. I think that's the path to victory. His road to the UFC. Joey, uh, Troy looks like a tough guy. You know, he doesn't have a quit button on him. But I'm going the dog. Uh, eight out of his 12 wins do come inside the distance. Four round one, three round two, and one round three. He's going to use his range real well, get in some combinations, and he actually has his own decent offensive wrestling. So let's see if he maybe uses his overall size and strength to take the kid down, and I think he gets him out of there. Billy? Yeah, it's a tournament, so A, B side, doesn't really matter. Each guy's have both equal chances uh, and opportunity here. And I think Shota's going to knock out Troy here. Uh, out of the three Roto UFC fights, this is actually one I would bet. Yep. DC, wrap it up. Kind of on the dog here on Sahota. Kind of torn between a decision or a knockout, and I'll just ride the fence, but I feel like it'll be one of those. Last prelim, DC. You oh, versus give me Elijah. give me the uh give me the South Korean, but not not with a lot of confidence, man. I'll, I'll take Young and I'll say 
He wins. Fuck, I don't know. I'll say he wins a decision, but I don't know, man. Just one I'm going to stay away from. Really? Pre-warning, I will be making breakfast for this fight. Will not be betting this fight. This will be my bathroom break fight. Joey? I don't know, Bill. You might be missing a little milk. I think you get him out of there. I, I think he's really like, <laughs> <not this fight. laughs> the only reason I say this because uh other dude, he has what three out of his five losses are inside the distance. He loses two subs in round one and then a KO. I think if you get to take down early, whether dry, I think he can get a submission. All right, coming up on an hour mills. Last up. I mean, Pretty they got the fight goes to distance minus 150. They think it's going to the scorecards. With that being said, I even liked you from the beginning in this one. Um, This is one to where I actually probably am going to be end up betting. So I bet Billy's doing his little whatever he's doing. I'm going to be trying to cash this bet. All right. First one on the main card, Ozzy Diaz versus Zang. Mills, I'll start with you. Man, Ozzy Diaz, you know, contender series debut and then go his way, right? He ran into the Pfeiffer, man. Why you guys got zipped up, man? Put him six feet under. Yeah, Let right. him know. Let him know. Stofer should have got it too. And then Zhang, I mean, shit, he made his UFC debut against Riberio, and I had a dog play, I want to say. Or, I, you know, I think I had straight on Rib- whatever Riberio was, I had him, right? And he got his ass knocked out, man. I was like, all right, man, whatever. In this one, though, man, I think Zang's uh, going to be the way that I'm going to be looking to play this. I think he's going to be able to win inside the distance. DS is good, but um, I don't think he's, like, UFC ready. And it's like this, man. Your last name is Diaz, and you got flown out to China. What do what, what, what you think they're doing in this one, man? I think Zang's going to get the job done. I'm with you, Mills. This is probably my, one of my favorite players on the whole card. Joey, what about you? I remember during Dana White Contender Series when Diaz fought Pfeiffer, and me and Billy are both talking, saying, yo, body, body bags, bags Pfeiffer, now Jersey. And guess what? Joe Pfeiffer was a fucking dog in that fucking fight. Wild, bro. Plus Wild, one time, I told bro. him, Wild, I gave bro. Billy my ticket. I threw about two, 200 on the Wild, money bro. line, and I threw about 100 on the KO prop. And I te- he was live streaming that shit. I was like, Billy, I'm throwing mad bread on Joe Pfeiffer. What happened? Boom. What's going to happen here? Probably round one. Boom. Simple as that. I think uh, Zhang and Yang's going to absolutely put him to the shot of round. Billy, you're all fired up about this one. What do you think? So the weird thing about this fight is actually the line on this one because Zhang was a plus 300 underdog against fucking Turco Torcos in the fucking Rota UFC fight. Which we saw his UFC debut. That nigga's trash, bro. Yeah. How the fuck were you plus 400, plus 300 against him? So when I see him at minus 300, it is a little bit of a hesitation of like the line is a little bit too wide. But then Ozzy Diaz, he, it's a little bit too late for him to be in the UFC, man. He's mm-hmm. a, little, a little bit older in his later years. It's like the LFA like said to – or. Somebody said to we'll get you in the USC. Just ain't the right time though. Um, I like fight not to start round three. Zhang inside a distance. Zhang first round knockout. Um, out of the whole entire fights in this card, it's probably the one I researched the most and probably have uh, the biggest feel on. Um, somebody's getting fucking smoked, bro. This is the most entertaining fight of the whole entire card by a wide margin. Like as long this as last. is fucking fireworks. Like, dude, if I give you some quick notes, uh. Nine wins for Ozzy Diaz by knockout, seven TKOs. Hasn't gotten a uh, knockout. Uh, he got knocked out in both career losses. For Ming Yang, he has a 10 fight win streak right now, all finishes. Like somebody's getting fucking smoked in this, John. Yeah. DC. Uh, yeah, there's going to be one firework from, from the Mountain Tiger, Zhang. First round knockout. Hey, uh, first up on this next one. You had a vet, Vulcan Ozdemir versus Charles Albury. Man, I really the it's just my like my fondness for Vulcan. It's just like me me being a fan of Vulcan is why I want to bet him as an underdog. Like I think he could win this fight. If he grapples, dude, Oberg might be in a little bit of trouble, but I think he's gonna just have too much distance to close and like Olberg is such a sniper off the back foot. I think he walks Vulcan onto some and knocks him out. But man, if Vulcan, you tell me Vulcan ends up winning this fight, I'm not gonna be too stunned, man. He's got way more experience at a way higher level. He's got way better wins than Olberg and he he didn't get knocked out by fucking Kennedy and Zechwu. But 
yeah, I got I got to go with Olberg here. Um, but I'm gonna pass, man. I'm gonna give Vulcan a little bit of respect and just say that he's live and just pass on it. Best of luck, though. Billy DFS. Uh, yeah, Olberg out of the whole entire card is the probably the fighter I've made the most money on career wise, but. Uh, th- 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 this seems like a parlay buster, bro. Be be real. Like when people pull up this card, they're gonna see Carlos Alberg two fifty. They're gonna throw some overnight parlays, and when you break down the fight metrics, man, he's thirty four. Ozemir's thirty five. Ozemir can wrestle. There's a huge level of competition difference. This nigga's flying from Australia. <laughs> like yo, this don't seem this don't seem like the uh the. This ain't the UFC rub that you're supposed to get as an Australian fighter, am I right or am I wrong, man? Like, damn, man, you fly half. Well, he's much, the world. he's much closer than I would say Vulcan is. Like, no, but I'm just Australia saying, Macau, no. Then from, I'm just, I'm just yeah, far. I'm just saying though. Like, I, I don't know. Wrong with that. I don't feel confident. I don't feel super. I feel like I should be super confident, in Carlos Over, but I'm not. Joey. I kind of agree with how Billy is. Like, if you're telling me, are we considering Ober for the base? I'm saying, fuck no. I'm I'm shutting that down right now. Don't do it. If you're telling me maybe as a leg, okay, you know, that's understandable. Um, I think round one depends. Like, you know, is Vulcan going to try to say, hey, I got no time on. I'm going to try to knock you out. Maybe. You know, sometimes you've been more patient. So I think it's more Oberg. I like Oberg round two or three. I think, you know, Vulcan's going to try to play it safe. He's going to try to pick his shots. I think Olberg's going to try to hit and move. And I think Vulcan is going to try to throw a power shot round two, round three. And I think Olberg's going to counter shot him. What about you, Mills? Yeah, man. I actually thought Vulcan Osamiro was going to be the like guy to take DC's belt, not one. Um, but he just didn't even look good in that fight. And then after that, followed it up and didn't really look the same, man. But I was a big Vulcan Osamiro fan, man. Um, and you look at all the people that he lost to, all of them besides Anthony Smith, to me, is good fighters that, you know, uh, was fighting for the title and everything like that. Yuri Prokoska, um, Akalayev, um, you know, and the list goes on about some other good fighters. But, Fuck yeah, he's Anthony, back- Smith. Anthony Smith fought for a title, so. I know, but to me, I just, that's why I said I never thought Anthony Smith was good. Mm-hmm. That's why I said besides that, you know, everybody besides him. I know he fought for that title. You know, that's why I had to exclude that. You know, he fought the title, <laughs> but I uh, dude, I uh, love it. I can't fucking stand you know, Anthony Smith. Please no, just all, him all, him. all the Smiths. But I respect dude, him I as a mixed martial him. artist and as a fighter and everything like that. But I just I don't know. And I do give him his credit when he came to this, uh, the the higher weight division. That's when he started to turn around his uh, career and, you know, and, and be the Anthony Smith that everybody liked. But I was so used to that other Anthony Smith. It's just hard for me to forget. Yeah. All right, man. But with that being said, shout out to you, Anthony Smith, Lionheart, all that shit. Um, but, yeah, man, this is one of where, yeah, you thought, like, yeah, I'm going to be playing Oberg no matter what. Oberg, Oberg, Oberg. Both these guys got finish ability. If I go inside the distance, it's probably the safest way to go. It's minus 190. Uh, over one and a half, I think it gets there at minus 160. But then again, who knows, man? Both can come out there and say, I ain't got time for that, and even just take him down. Oberg could come out there, pick him out from range real quick, and just knock him out, you know? Um, I don't know, man. I don't know which way I'm going to get. If this line drops, I might be looking at Oberg to play. Um, but me, I will be playing probably Friday night goes the distance. I don't think it's going the distance. Your first step on this one, Wong it versus Wong Wang, man. I mean, we seen her made her UFC debut, right? And we had her in that one. Gave her out as a podcast bet for you guys to win inside the distance, to win by KO. And this one, though, oh, man, let's see. So is this is, – are they tripping on this one? What? They got it. Wow, they don't think this one is um going um they think this one's going the distance, folks. Uh fight goes the distance is minus 130. Uh the over two and a half is minus 150. Wang inside is plus 125. I think I found a way to get paid. I mean, I played it last time and it was like minus 160 or minus 175. I think the win inside the distance. This one I'm getting plus 125. Give me Wang wins inside the distance in this one, though. I do say Gabriel Fernandez, though. She is going to be a girl that's going to be able to stand up there, same type of statue, Um, you know, big physical girl. Um, But we'll see how this one goes, man. I don't think that price tag is right at all. There's nothing I can do to say, yeah, man, I'm parlaying this. This is that Bo Nickel type of fighter. No, I'm not. But I do think that inside the distance is the best way to get paid. Joey? Yeah, I'm on Wang. I'm 
Do you know? Do you have an over under on rank yet? <laughs> So uh, over two and a Sorry. half months before 50. Coming out the closet. <laughs> said I'm oh, God, that's be, God, that's gonna be clipped. Good lord. Um, but no, like these two good strikers in their own right before they got into overall game MMA. I know Fernandez never been finished as a, a pro, but I do think uh Kong Wang is the better overall striker. Uh she's actually more around it. She gets you might see her take Fernandez down. Fernandez take down defense is sus as fuck. So I think the under could be live. I'm probably going to just go uh, Kong Wang. I don't know about a method and Big Show is laughing his ass off over there. <laughs> but I got Kong Wang. Billy, are you on the Wang too? Uh, yeah, I like the Joker here in this matchup. I don't think Gabri- uh, Gabriela Fernandez is that good. I bet Carly Judas against her. That shit went to a split decision and it was fight of the night. That tells you everything you need to know. I think uh, – the Joker here is probably my most confident pick of the whole entire card. TC, Wang or no Wang for you? Yeah, I, I'm agree with Billy. I think uh, Wang Kong is gonna fucking ching chang chong this bitch. I, I think I think uh, it, this is a setup fight for Kong. So yeah, she's the side. Yeah, we already talked about it a little bit. Son versus Salikov. TC, Salikov, knockout. Sure, second yeah. round knockout. Uh, Salikov decision. Wouldn't bet this fight with my own enemy's worst money. Joe DFS. <laughs> with, with so I'll be honest with you. Ooh. I was yay close for saying Big Show pull out the flag for song. <laughs> no, you, you just say I'm on the way, so that's even better. <laughs> that's, the flag. that's the clip of the podcast. I'm on the way. Uh, so I guess I'm probably going to be the only one, but I'm on Kine's, Kine's song. I think, look, I think he's live. I really do. I think if he really puts his foot to the pedal, I think he can get Salakov out of there, personally. Yeah, if you've seen something, nothing wrong with being a little bit convicted with yeah, him. Yeah, Salakov's really. kind of chinny, man. He's old. Yeah, bro, I, 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 I'm not blaming you for betting Kanong Song in this one. Like, bro, you could flip a coin, bro. I'm probably somebody. Like, go watch yeah. uh, yeah. Salakov's last two okay. fights. He's flat-footed. He gets flat-footed. Randy Brown caught him when he got flat-footed. Boom. Uh, Ponza Nibio late in the fight was – Catching him on the chin, he almost Randy got Brown does not just haul off and slump people either. Usually, bro, he yeah. looked all of forty years old, bro. Yeah. Randy Brown made him like, bro, are you taking your gloves like, off? Randy Brown's show? a good fighter and he's a good boxer, but dude, he's just slumped. Hundred by knockout, baby. Solid cop. The, the cliff has fallen. I mean, I might that knockout probably looks kind of juicy. So, but Big Show's like, look, Big Show taught me just take the plus money on the money line. That's what I'm probably gonna end up doing. What about you, Mills? That cup had too tight. You thinking song? I mean, you already know where I'm at, man. Like, when it comes to mixed martial arts, y'all going to take somebody with the last name Song or you're going to take somebody that's the king of fucking Kung Fu. And that's what I'm going to do, man. He covered as a big plus money underdog against Sansa. He's going to be a Ponce Nebio. I'm taking him in this spot, minus 155. The computer is being closed, so the notes are going away. So. You sure did have a lot of enthusiasm in your voice. Yeah, that's, how about that's you, the how, how about you start it's off this baby shirt? I already told you guys it's, it's one of my premiums. Like I'm already out the window with that shit. Like I'm what more do I need to do on like, conviction? You guys can't you know? read between the lines, man. I, was I, was I, was I was it. <laughs> He said I got it at 155, but it went up to 180, like two what days. What about later. this one, Mills? I love it, man. I love this fight, man. This is like, I think, one of the more entertaining fights on there. Why is the co-main event? Hence, of course, man, Baby Shark getting that big step up right here. <laughs> step up against a fighter that's already been fighting in those co-main events. Main events, maybe. I don't know. Don't quote me on that. But I know both these fighters are kind of ready, man. Uh, the price tag, though, I think it's going to come down, man. I think uh, a lot of people's going to be betting Baby Shark. They're going to feel a little bit of simp empathy and stuff like that, too. That's always one of my girls. That's somebody I've been betting. I don't think I never bet against her. I only lost once recently, and that was against Lupita Godinez. She didn't look good in that fight. Before that, she only lost to Man in Ferrell, I want to say. And that was a big step up, you know. Um, F it, man. Joey said it, man. There's three G's in life. You got to stick to them. Stick to your guys. Stick to your girls. Stick to your gut and guns. Tab with the Richie. She's been one of my girls. Give me Baby Shark to win. So it only took him like fucking 25 minutes to change it up. I'm curious to see what you say on Friday or Saturday when the fights come, if you're still on the same page. Joey, what about you? I'll be I'll be realistic too as well. You know, Richie's been one of my girls since she got into the UFC. But if she can't get this fight to the ground, then... How come you're not on Richie? 
That would, I would I'm on Richie. Yeah, I'm on Richie. Sex with her, dude. I mean, if she, she hit my DMs if she want, but I know she's fighting that little Irish boxer dude now. But um, I'll be real. If she can't get to the to the ground, she might get pieced up for three. Um, but do I think she wins the decision? I don't think so. So I'm gonna stamp this. If she wins, it's by submission. Bailey. You're looking down. I couldn't tell if you were even No notes. No notes. Pressure's but, on. Uh, no oh, you prices. You have an original thought? And I think y'all might be inside, but I don't think I want to bet it because I'm a Richie diehard fan. I'm mm, talking about right. day one. I tell you since day one. Right. Because of looks. I like her boyfriend, too. No diddy. Mm-hmm. No diddy. Mm-hmm. No diddy. Mm-hmm. I won't get a little ball fine, but her uh, boyfriend's a pretty good boxer. Uh, First yeah. UFC fighter I Billy thought was, thought was hot that I could agree with. TC, what do you think? I've just heard it all now, That's Billy. Chat, bro. We just have no shot. Dude, I just go for the ones I actually think I have a shot. <laughs> like Kale Harrison. <laughs> just have just have the never say die attitude, and it's it's a just realize it's a numbers game, and you you know you'll you'll hit something eventually, man. Um, but uh, yeah, Yan Shaunan by decision, but no, no, thank you past but i dude there i would love nothing more to see her just fucking do what she did to andraj and just shut this baby shark shit down but yeah like i, I wouldn't surprise me if Richie won either so yeah i'll just pass but yon shot on decision do you see you get to be the first one to talk about this oh, hell. Talk about it at all tonight the main event peter yon versus davison figueredo I must have done something, dude. And I mean, I can probably think of a couple things that might have been, but I must have done something to the MMA gods for them to give me this fucking matchup. This feels, this is, no, it doesn't feel like it. It is just like Justin Gaethje and Max Holloway for me. Two of my favorite fighters that are forced to fight. This is like Lawler and Condit for me, boys. This fucking sucks, dude. This is fucking... It's going to be an awesome fight, but I fucking can't stand it. Like, I'm a big fan of both of these dudes. And, like, fuck, man. It is going to be a sick fight. I I favor Jan um, in the five-rounder to win a decision. Like, I know Figgy has a lot of, of, you know, five-round fight experience, but um, Jan is just so much more dangerous on the feet than Moreno, though. And Moreno fuck him up in a couple fights. Um... He's gotten tuned in a couple of these fights at Bantamweight a little bit. Um, now, obviously, like, he's done a little bit of it himself. But Jan is really tough. Um, I feel like the price is a little bit wide, but I do feel like Jan should be favored. I think people – Jan is someone that I think people have really fucking written off to almost a disrespectful level. But I'm going to show Figgy the respect and just kind of – I'm probably going to end up passing on this, but – I hate it. It's going to be a sick fight probably, though. Give me Jan. I think it could go to a split. I think Jan could knock him out. I think Figgy could maybe club and sub him. Figgy's really fucking dangerous. I do think he's a live underdog, so I will be uh, – again, I'm not going to be parlaying Jan up. That is – God, that has bitten me more times than I, than I care to fucking think about. But, uh, yeah, give me give me fucking no mercy here. I think he gets back on track and, and gets a fucking huge win over a surging fucking contender. I think he holds Billy, the game. Let's go. Billy, no, Billy, no notes. Yeah, I'll be super quick because I gotta leave in ten minutes. Uh, if you guys are down though in, in the uh, Atlantic City area, come holla at your boy Billy Bruce DFS. But um, I like Figgy here. One of my dog picks on the card. Man, I can't believe I'm saying it, but yeah, bro, I got Figgy here, bro. I think he's gonna win this fight on some bullshit, bro. Like Peter Jan's been talking about, oh, it's da, 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 da. man, fuck the bullshit, bro. Figgy at plus two sixty five is wild, bro. And I think it's only gonna go up. Joey DFS. I absolutely think the line is absolutely wild. Like, Jan's been out for a good minute. Uh, Figgy's been looking good since moving up weight. If you told me this was a three-round fight, oh, I would have thrown good money on uh, Figueredo here. But there's a line that Roy Jones Jr. says in one of his songs, y'all must have forgot. I'm going Peter Jan. So I think Peter Jan's going to have the bigger striking moments. Mills? <coughs> Yeah, man. So I got to see Peter Yan actually fight live. Uh, I think it was against Douglas Saber on Drage or whatever. I had to play on uh, the, the plus money underdog and Drage. I, vernacular, I didn't know who the fuck Peter Yan was. Nobody did. Peter Yan whooped his ass, man. Um, Ever since then, you know, he's been turning around, you know, fighting for the title, getting the belt. Man, in this one, no, Figueredo, he only lost to three people, and that's one fighter twice. Um, Ever since he stepped up into this weight class, it seemed like it fits them all. 
It's time to plant that flag, boys. And I'm planting it right now. Give me the God of War. Davidson Figueredo, man. Y'all must have forgot. Y'all must have forgot. Matter of fact, get goddamn right. Remember what he did to Joseph Benavides? Right cross, ground and pound. Knocked his ass out. What'd he do besides that? Fought him again, choked his ass out. One of the more brutal uh, finishes you ever see in that uh, weight class. Then, you know what I mean? Followed it up now. 3-0 in this weight class. Choked out Cody Garbrandt. Got past Rob Font. Beat Marlon Cheeto Vera, made him into a bag of Cheetos at that. Man, give me plus money. I got this when it was plus 200. Took an early stab. I was on the wrong side on this one. Should have waited, could have got it with y'all. But I'm already in, and I think Davidson Figueredo is the god of war for a reason. Got to get him in this one. There you go. That wraps up the main card. Quick little commercial. We'll get here to build in a parlay. Hey, what's going on, y'all? It's Mills here. Pub Sports Radio. Do you guys want to challenge the personalities here at Pub Sports Radio? Do you guys think you're better than them at entering in your MMA predictions and picks? Would you want to get paid for it? $100? Here's how you do it, man. You sign up right here at the link below. It's just this easy. PubSportsRadio.com. Enter your email. Pick your weekly picks. That's it. Oh, and you get bonus points if you can predict how they're going to win and what round. Every single week, a new winner is getting crowned. So every Saturday on Pub Sports Radio. So come on and check us out. You can win $100 just for signing up. Only thing you need to do is see if you can beat us here at Pub Sports Radio by entering your UFC predictions and picks weekly. Do it. I dare you. See you guys soon. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. We got the super. Uh, I, I'll, I'll give you my vote of confidence because I gotta fucking get on that. All right. Well, we're not. Well, one thing we realized: we're not, not rushing. rushing. I'm just giving you my vote of confidence of like what fighters. So I when need. you need to go, like we can, we can. Yeah, like yeah. Right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not doing the mill shit from last week. I'm just giving like maybe this is a good starting point. Um. The uh, most confident fighter that I'm in this week would be obviously the Joker. I mean, that line's minus 900, though. So, like, I would probably say the Joker and my Shate would be my favorite part of this week. How about, how about, give give us one through six? One through six. If you, would, if you wouldn't mind. The Joker, Mahashate. Um, then I would say the uh, big minus 330 guy. Um, Loner Kavanaugh. You talking about Zhang? The yeah, yeah. yeah. he's minus three thirty. I mean, like uh, we got Zhang and Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh minus three forty. Then the Fang chick from the road to UFC one. Yep. And then I would then I would probably start getting into my underdog picks. Like I actually like some of these underdog picks more than some no, of these. For, for sure. No, I mean that that's pretty good because you know how it goes with this. Yeah. Like a, you know, you know we, we might end up having to go a little bit deeper into the you know the confidence list. So. so I can give you my two parlays. I actually wrote down. I wrote down uh Wang and Zhang. Minus two hundred, or I did Zhang and Fang minus one twenty nine. I was thinking about the Wang Fang Zhang, honestly. Like I, yeah, I think I think all those fighters win, honest. And uh, yeah, I also think that uh, now I'm with Billy. I think there's a lot, there's a quite a few live underdogs, but mm -hmm. yeah, Fang Zhang Mahashate, um, those are those are ones that I'll, I'll feel pretty confident. Like obviously, like Wang Kong is a big fucking favorite. Like if you're putting her in there, fuck. It's gonna like, be a side piece. like, I don't know. He, no he, yeah. he didn't like her as his most confident pick. So, I mean, like, there's a few. Oh, yeah. 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 I don't want to throw in the minus right. 330 guy as a base leg. He was plus three something against Toko's Torquoise. And dude, that was the easiest bet I hit in my life. Even though the line was wrong, just the line functionality is incorrect, bro. You shouldn't be minus 330. Like, it's more of like a like a really confident prop I am now on this. How about, uh, I know it might be uh, spicy, but what about the two girls? I, I know how we are with female fights. I know it's we're the day legs and we're watching a card at three o'clock in the morning. Tell me how to be pissed off to start off your day without the strength. So my... Wang and Fang. Wang Thang. The Yan and Mashate. I don't like Peter Yan. I think he's probably right. my... the, the girl. Yeah, Yan, Yan Shaunan. I think he meant. Yan. Uh... Well, no, because because no, nah, because some uh, a couple Joker? people are on Richie. Joker. No, I think what? he said against Richie. I think. Yeah. Oh, 
I mean, if it stays standing, oh, it's going to be We don't want to do that, though, man. We don't want to bet against one of our girls in the base, though. That's crazy. No, yeah, so, I, I think I think I think Richie and Jan should be left out of it. Personally. How about Olberg? Oh God, no! I'm gonna push back. I'm gonna push back. I'm just throwing out names cool. that, like, I know we all picked. I know we picked. We all picked Wang. We all picked Olberg. Olberg would make Wang and Machate. We all. I think. Yeah, I think we. All I don't hate. I don't hate Wang and Machate at all. And there's. I didn't know Machate is the first fight. Road to UFC fight to be a base in the parlor. Like what? We're about to go. Oh, we can't do a female fight, but then we can't do the um, road to UFC fight. Why would we do a road to UFC fight as a base in the parlor? It's just my opinion. No, I'm just giving it options. If you go by like comments, I think she's gonna smoke yeah. the old girl. Ma, Ma Shate and Fang. Yeah, I think that other chick is shit. Ma, she, I think that girl. She Ming is not a real fighter. She She Ming is like a fucking. Uh, she's like what? What's minus one hundred seven? She's like a Ramona Pasquale kind of bitch. What do you guys think, Mills? What do you think? You got any fight back on that? I mean, I'm on my Shate. Are you um, on Fang? Which one? Fang. Fang over Shy. That girl that looks like a one on fiver. We're putting a tournament uh, the, in three. Yeah. The, 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 the Zong Kang Fang. Yeah. The, the Fang versus Shang Shang Zhao Khan. Shai, or whatever the hell her name is. Yeah. Um, like, I mean, because what? We would probably feel better if betting that than Zhang than a male being a big favorite. Just, just think about it. I mean, I think I, mean? I think this other dude, this Ozzy Diaz dude, was brought in to get fucking smoked by Zhang by, by, by the big fucking Chinese heavyweight. But Me I too. mean, I, I get it. Like, I do. I understand because both guys, they. But this girl, this girl is big. Like it's like five seven to, to, to Joey's five two. So like you know what I mean? There's a big disparity. Like, and I think like yeah. women's MMA is a big favorite compared to the upside of a big favorite losing as a male. You know what I mean? Like I just think right. like knockout ability is there with the male being minus three hundred. Knockout ability unless she just goes out there and just gasses out or something like you know what I mean with the women female fight. I think it's just a little bit more safer. But me, it don't matter. I'm. I, 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 either one of those, you know what I mean? I just know I did the I did the Zhang Fang. I, I know I got minus 129. I know if you want to do – I know both females are scary. Don't get me wrong. I know that. It has the same line as uh, Ming Yang because both uh, Ming Yang and Fang are minus 300. And I know we think the Joker is going to win. Which I think Joker is going to cruise. Yeah, that's my most confident pick of the Yeah, that's, one of my, that's my number one. I'm fine with Wang in it. And then – if you guys want to look at other fights, we were very confident. Most con your most confident's a minus nine hundred, though, Billy. I, I'm, I'm just, just a base. my most confident pick of the card. If I had to pick a parlay in this whole entire card, I'd parlay her with uh, Ma Shate. It's minus one sixty on pay. Like I'm gonna back Billy up what he says about the, the uh, last card for pay per view. The main parlay that he gave out for the most was chalky as shit. The two base you could put it probably get like minus two hundred to like maybe. And maybe as low as minus 180, depends on when people put it in. But then if you want to use one of our lines for as a base, as a third leg, to get maybe plus money, depending on who you like. I know, like I said, they're both minus 300. I know we don't tend to like going debuts, and it's up to you guys personally. I, I wrote down Zhang Fang, minus 129. If you want to go. We really don't need to. We need picks. So if people. I'm fine with Wang. I'm, I'm fine. I'm, uh, my thing is, is like, why. Uh, it's like road to UFC is so volatile with the bookies. The bookies don't really know who should really be the favorite or not. Like they're just going off of how people are betting. Who's to say like she 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 should be the favorite and a big favorite? But who's to, who knows what the fuck? Like it's road to UFC, man. I like I don't. It's want the that. same thing could be said about Wang Kong, though, bro. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like That's Fernandez. She is Fernandez, Fernandez kind of fight at least three oh, times in the UFC. Fight losing streak and then wait to a split decision. But we've seen her fight, though, is the thing. We seen oh, we Wang fight her. once. We all bet Carly Judas, but we bet Carly Judas against her, right? Get the fuck out of here. Okay, so Bill, so so Bill, one more time was it? So you said well, obviously Wang is your most confident, but beyond that, it I was um uh, I gotta pull up the fucking card. He said Zhang, the guy. Uh, sure. Yeah, yeah, no. I said uh if I had to rank it just scale wise, I would say the Joker, which is the minus nine hundred. Right. Number three would be Ma Shate at minus two fifteen. Number three for me would be the minus three thirty guy that's fighting Ozzy Diaz. Number four for me would probably be Call of Goldberg. Number five for me would be Loner Kavanaugh. Number six for me would be well, what about Ma Shate and Zhang? Yeah, that's minus one ten. I mean, um, I think I, I just don't want uh, just me personally. I just don't want to rode the UFC final in my opinion. Okay, if you don't, if you really want to go off that, how about Meng Yang and Olberg? 
Well, Mahashate and Zhang no. are both not road to UFC. Like Zhang has already been in the UFC. He's already got a UFC. If you go Ming Yang and Olberg, you get minus one twenty three. I'm not. I don't. I'm not. I'm fighting back on Olberg. No, that's I fine. Think, I, I think he wins, but not in the core. What do you guys think about Machate and Minyan? It's minus 110. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with the, either – all of them, bro. All of them except for, like you said, with Oldberg. That's, the only one that, that's like Billy's two and three. We're avoiding the big chalk. So you said uh, Machate and – Minyan. Uh, my shot is minus 215. Minyang is minus 330. That comes in at minus yeah. 110. All right. Yeah, I got minus 104. Well, we're using F- FanDuel, so it's minus 110. Yeah. Hey, good enough. Hey. Anybody got a leg? Yeah, like okay. Yeah, okay. That's cool. Let's go. Got it. Yeah, I can, oh, I can see it. I think both guys can win by knockout. Um. I like All right, I talked enough. I, 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 I talked enough about it. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me fucking Feng Shao Kahn. Oh, let's get it. I'm gonna take uh, Yan, the female. Who would you take, real Feng? Yeah. You All right, TC got <laughs> Feng. Minus three ten. That comes in at plus one fifty two. I'm going to talk that. Okay. I'm going to take Jan. Which one are you taking? Jan versus Rigi. Jan okay. That's not bad. So I just want to go over one more time. The base is Ming Yang and Ma Shate, correct? Yep. Okay. Um. Then my leg, I will go with... I'll go Olberg. Joey Olberg. That is a plus 162. Hey. Mills, Billy. Um, um, man, I'm going you on with Lee. Lee? Nah, man. I like the girl that's minus 330. So I'm with two cents. Um, Let's go. All right. With Fang. I'm not about to make it. Billy, three screens. What are you doing on the. What are you doing for your piece? Let me guess. Wang Kong. If I take help, I'm going to laugh if you just left and. Oh, he said he yeah, we know he wants Wayne Kong. That's why I didn't take it. So, right, I'm really, that's, his, so that's his leg for sure. You know really what I mean? You want, you want Wang? Because I took Olberg. Uh, TC and uh, Mills took uh, Fang. Uh, Big Show took uh, Jan versus Richie. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. Billy, you're holding up the whole fucking podcast. I know he's texting we're gonna, We're just going to pick Wang. We know he is, so that's what I'm saying. It's good already. We know that's why we I didn't pick it, that's why we left it off. So, all right, Mills, where can they find you? What do you got going on the rest of the week? Hey, yo, check us out over here at Pop Sports Radio, man. Dropping the dopest content where you guys need to just sit back and listen, put that stuff back, son. Um, interview coming out with Adrian Giannis. Stay tuned for that. He got a fight coming out in December, it's gonna be a good one, too, man. So, definitely want to stay tuned with that. Uh, dropping winners over here, so stay tuned for the parlay. And hey, man, it's the best way to get paid. Uh, Joey, you can find me at Joe DFS Betting. Um, I'm going to do more research and breakdown for this card leading up. And I'm not going to lie, Mills' overall breakdown for the Jan and Figueredo fight, it's almost getting me to switch because Figgy is a goat in his own right. But we'll see. If you want to see me make my mind up, make sure you follow me on Twitter and definitely tune in early morning, 3 a.m. Yeah, we'll be live 3 a.m. in the morning Saturday at Pub Sports Radio. Come check us out, TC. What do you got going on for the rest of the weekend? When is your prelim show or your weigh-in show? So I've actually, uh, yeah, I started doing my show on Friday. So if anybody wants to come through, I'll be covering the weigh-ins. Um, I think I'm just going to cover the weigh-ins live. Usually I, I try and 
I don't know, though. It, it just depends. I'll put out the thumbnail whenever I do go live. It'll either be before the ceremonials or maybe the uh, the live weigh-ins, depending on what time they are. But, man, make sure you guys uh, tune in. It will be an early morning showdown in Macau, 3 o'clock in the fucking morning. So get that pot of coffee brewing early. I will have my sorry ass up and here on time, hopefully, man. But, uh, nah, man, shout out to all you guys watching the premiere. Make sure you all smash the like button before you get the fuck up out of here. Uh, shout out to all you guys on the panel, of course. Uh, yeah, man. Shout out to the whole fucking pub. Best of luck, boys. Let's get it. Let's get these parlays. And uh, yeah, man. Shout out to all you guys. Appreciate it. As, as always, follow me at Bay Show Picks on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram. Shout out to Billy Briz DFS. He was on the show too. He had to cut out early. Make sure you head over to Pub Sports Radio. Play the UFC tournament. Hundred bucks winner. You've seen the commercial halfway through. If you're still here. Appreciate all the likes and comments that we have got. But please engage more if you guys got plays. I can engage with us. Well, you know, we'll chop it up. And next thing you know, you might be the next Joey. If you talk good enough stuff, you never know. You might be able to, you might be able to get a little call in spot, but that's the show boys. Just wanted to say before I went, John Jones, best pound for pound fighter. Bad.